All right, today we're going to uh, learn about some of the various operations we can do with ternary phase diagrams. And so the first thing we're going to talk about um, are lever rules. All right, so uh, I start with a question here. So I have a ternary phase diagram, an isothermal section that we did last time at 1600 degrees Celsius. And I have three compositions, A, B, and C, and they're labeled there on the screen for you. Um, so my first question is, how do we determine the phase amounts at these compositions? So not the compositions themselves, we've already went over how to do this, but how do we get the phase amounts? And so I'm not asking for you to actually get the amounts, I just want to know how you get them. And so take a second to think about this, uh, jot it down in the, the questions uh, activity, uh, and then uh, we'll come back here and talk about it. All right, so now let's talk about how we actually get these phase amounts. And I'm gonna start with A and B. So these are the ones that you should already know how to do. And it's a ternary phase diagram, so it looks a little different, but it's very similar to um, the, the phase rules or the um, how you determine phase amounts in binary systems. So let's start with uh, composition A here. So composition A is in the region that we've identified um, when we construct this isothermal section um, as being 100% liquid, right? That's the only phase that we see here. And therefore, if I'm in any, if I'm at 1600 degrees Celsius uh, and in this giant region, that anywhere in this giant region I see, then I should have 100% liquid, right? So this isn't meant to be a quick trick question, but it is just 100% liquid. Right? So that's just like um, in uh, binary systems, if you're in a one phase region, you have 100% of that phase. So that's going to be the, uh, the answer to part A. So part B, or the composition B now, uh, again, if we think back to the, uh, creating this isothermal section, we remember that uh, in this region, we had equilibrium between the liquid and one of the solid phases, and the solid phase being molite, which had a composition uh, right here. And so we drew those radiating tie lines uh, to indicate the, um, the indicate the joining of the composition of the solid to the liquid, where the liquid composition is uh, anywhere along this line. So we have a two phase region. And so this case, um, the answer to this question ends up being the same as in binary. It's the same binary lever rule that you learned in MSC 201, maybe uh, did in other classes as well, but it's the same rule. The only difference is it looks different because it's a ternary phase diagram, but you do it in the same way. You find your compositions of the liquid and the solid, and then you uh, use the lever rule and determine and so you would determine it in the same way that you did a binary lever rule. So I definitely recommend go back and look at that if you're a little fuzzy on the binary lever rule. All right, so now we get to the third one. And so let me go back to that real quick. So the third one, uh, uh, composition C, um, in this case, we see that now we're in one of those regions that we identified last time as having three phases. And so, in our toolbox from binary systems, we don't have a tool for calculating three-phase equilibrium, the phase amounts in that. So we don't yet have something that can do that. So now if I get to the next slide, the, the tool to do that is the ternary lever rule. So like binary, but it's the ternary lever rule. All right, so this is how we can do the ternary lever rule. So I'm gonna kind of take you through it the step-by-step step, uh, in how to do this. So the first step is simply to verify that the composition you're at, in this case, X, but in the previous case as well, make sure it's in uh, within a three-phase region. So uh, whatever you need to do to do that, but make sure you have, uh, are within this three-phase region. Then, uh, you're going to identify the compositions of those three phases. So in this case, it's going to be A, B, and C. So 
A is the composition of this phase, B is the composition of this phase, C is the composition of this phase. And so from there, um, you are, uh, it's best to uh, create a triangle if you haven't already. And then what we can do is determine the weight fractions of each phase. And so the way we can do this is we can um, start with our composition X and draw lines through that point and parallel to each of the bases of that triangle. And so this should sound very similar to how you did composition, right? So I have uh, this line is parallel to the base here, uh, a line here that's parallel to this base, and then there's another one that's parallel to the AB base, right? So I'm drawing three lines parallel to each of the bases through point X. So from there, I can determine the amounts of phases I have. And so you'll see here that on the bottom of this triangle here, you'll see that uh, I've already sort of divided up the fractions. So from point C to where this first line intersects is known as X, the middle portion between the two lines is Y, and this last portion between this line and B is Z. And so these are the fractions that I'm going to use to determine the weight fractions of each of the components. And so the way this works is um, the way that I think about this is just like the binary level rule. So this is uh, the composition of phase C. And so if I want to determine how to, uh, the, the fraction of C, I'm going to use the portion opposite C. And so that's going to be this fraction Z. And so if you look up here, the fraction for C is Z over the combined total of that length. So I would calculate the overall length of that line and then the length of the Z segment, and that would give me uh, the fraction for component C. And then I would do the same thing. If I want to get B, component B, the opposite of B is going to be this fraction over here with X. And so fraction B is X over the total. And then that leaves uh, Y. And so Y is in the middle. It's uh, opposite to A up here at the top. And so that's going to give me uh, the fraction of A. So Y over the total. And so the, the combination of those three can be used uh, to determine the fractions of these three phases. So in this case, uh, we use this um, bottom portion of the triangle. Keep in mind, uh, we could also use other portions of the triangle, uh, but it would have to be, um, but it would uh, essentially, the, the distances would be different, but we would use the same methodology uh, to do it. For example, if we wanted to use the base A, B, the fraction for B would be here, the fraction for A would be over here, and then C would be opposite, and so that would be in the middle. So it's all based on the relative positions and what uh, side of the triangle that you're using. So in this case, uh, it gives you a, a X, Y, and Z, um, and corresponding to B, C, and A. All right, so there's also a way where you can just determine one of the phase fractions. This isn't quite as useful um, as the complete method, but every once in a while there's a, there's a way to, uh, you might wanna just get one of them instead of all three. And so in that case, uh, we draw just one of the lines. So in this case, we're going through the point X and to the, um, through the point A and then through the opposite uh, end of the, the triangle. So intersecting that base CB. And so in this case, the fractions between A, X, and the opposite base are what give us the fraction of A in the remaining B and C. So in this case, um, Y, the opposite segment, is equal to the fraction of A. So Y over X plus Y equals the fraction of A. And so then from there, you can also get the fractions of A and B from the base of the triangle. But again, um, this is not as much of a straightforward method as the, the previous. All right, 
So this brings us back to the same plot I had before. And so now that I've, I've already asked you how to do it, and now I actually want you to calculate these uh, amounts. And so uh, again, we went through A, so you can go ahead and write A if you want, but uh, feel free to ignore that one. Uh, but I do want you to concentrate on the phase amounts for B and C. Uh, see if you can use those lever rules to get the, uh, the phase amounts at those two compositions. So pause the video, um, print it off if you need to, or, or make a screenshot, however you need to get that image, but uh, uh, see if you can calculate those phase amounts. Uh, so pause it and then come back and we will discuss. All right, we're back and we're gonna talk about how to determine the phase amounts for these compositions. Uh, so like I mentioned, A, is in a single phase region of liquid so it's a hundred percent liquid and so i won't talk too much about that uh, but i do want to go ahead and talk about b so like i mentioned before b uh, is a composition inside a two-phase field which means that we can apply the binary level rule just like we did with the binary system when we had two phases uh, in equilibrium so let me go ahead and show you how we can do that. So I'm gonna exit out of the screen here and I've uh, zoomed in and sort of cropped uh, a certain portion of the, the uh, diagram for us. So this just shows us, uh, mostly just shows us the two phase region. Keep in mind that this point down here uh, is the composition of molite. And then this line that we identified in the previous section was the liquidus. And our composition is B and it's right on one of these tie lines. And so that tie line was what we used in a binary system to determine the amounts. And so if you'll remember how we did that was we uh, took the entire tie line, and so I'm gonna select a line here, and I identify, uh, I identify the tie line, which is this line here, from one end of the um, two-phase region to the other end, and I drew a line. And so that's what I have here. And so um, I'll note that that link is 4.49 uh, inches in this unit that we have, right? So that, uh, and then let me go ahead and write that length. Four point four nine inches long. Okay. So then uh, to determine the amounts of phases, we took the portion of the tie line opposite the fulcrum, which is our point B, um, to get the amount of the phase. So since this end is molite, if I wanted to determine the amount of molite under these conditions, I used the fraction of the line opposite of the fulcrum, which is from B up to this point here. And so I can draw another line and that was uh, 0.84 inches, if you can see that on the screen. And I'm gonna have that as a different color. And I'm gonna call that X, 0.84 inches. And then let me write that again here. That's X, okay? And then on uh, the other section, That is from the middle here to the other side. That is 3.64. And I'm gonna make that red. So I'm gonna call that Y, 3.64. And that is Y. All right, so again, if I wanna get molite, we use the fraction opposite, which is X, over the, the total length of that line. And so that would have that would be uh, 0.84 divided by 4.49. And that gives me about 19%. So my fraction, and let me write this out for you. Weight fraction of molite.
is x over x plus y for the total, which is uh, 0.84 inches over 4.49, and that is equal to, um, I got, uh, what did I get? 18.7, or 0.87. All right, so if I wanna get the other fraction, so if I wanna get the amount of liquid, then I'm gonna use the Y segment of that, and that's gonna be this portion here, and that's gonna be the 3.7, or 3.64, sorry, um, and that's going to be 81.1%. All right, so you'll notice that these fractions don't perfectly match up. So if we combine those, we get we get 99.8. Um, so there's a little error in me calculating the line segments here. So having to do it in this way wasn't the best, as you can kind of see, uh, these don't match up, uh, but we're pretty close, and so I'm, I'm happy with that. But again, you can always use that as a double check because these there's only two phases, so they should match up and add up to 100%. And so that's how we can get the, the weight fractions, again, we have a little error in this case. So again, this is just how we use binary level rule, but in a ternary phase diagram system. All right, so we've done A and B, and so let's go ahead and look at C. So again, C was in a three phase field, and so that's what we're gonna be looking at now. All right, so I'm gonna exit out of the program, so we can zoom in to the region that has the three phase region. So I'm kind of showing it here and I'm just highlighting that region so we're not confused by a bunch of other things. So we've already identified it's in a three phase field. So that was the first step. And our compositions of those three phases are going to be the corners. So this is the composition of corundum down here or aluminum oxide. This is the composition of molite here and then that means that the one left is the composition of liquid. So basically, again, anywhere along that line was the liquidus. So this has got to be the liquid. So that's our, um, that's our triangle for determining phase amounts. So the next step we were going to do was to draw lines through that point C and parallel to the bases. So if you remember how I did that with composition, I'll do the same thing. And so I'll make a line parallel to this base and then move it so that it's through um, uh, that point C. And I'll do the same thing for the other bases. So give me a second to do that, but I'm just making lines parallel to each of the bases and then it goes through point C. All right. Got the second one, and then for the last one, all right, so I've got lines through each of the bases. Okay. So now I'm going to select a base uh, to do the measurements. And so in this case, I'm going to use this uh, one here along this side. And the only reason I'm doing that uh, is because the length is long. So that's the longest side of the triangle. And, and therefore, it'll be a little easier to determine the amounts um, of these line segments. And so that's why I'm going to use that. All right. So let me go ahead and draw another line. And I'm going to do this to measure the length of that final 
the the base of this triangle. So if you'll note that that is 7.57 inches, and I'm going to change the line color of that, and then put this in a text box for you. And that was 7.57. All right, so we've got our total length. And then let's measure each of the lengths that we have. I'm gonna make a new shape, which is the line. And I'm gonna go from the edge to where this line is. And you'll note that that says one inch. And I'm going to change the color there so I can keep track. So I'll call this X, and this is one inch. This is also inches. All right. Same thing. Measure the middle section. That is 4.04. .04. I'm going to call that y inches, 4.04 .04 inches, and that was this middle segment. And I'm going to change the color. That will be purple. And then this last one, which will be z, is 2.52 inches. And I'll change that color one last time. So this will be, uh, let's make this yellow. All right, and then let me just really quickly label these. X, Y, And then this was Z. All right. And so now we can do our calculations. All right. So if we start with um, the if we start with the the phase that we're after, and so let me do liquid first, just because that's what's up here uh, up here first. So liquid um, again is the composition up here, and so that is on the base of the triangle base. And so we're going to use the opposite. And so this is going to be the last one we just did, which is Z. And so for liquid, we are going to have, it's going to be Z over X plus Y plus Z, which is the length of the triangle, the, the base. And so that would equal to 2.52 divided by 7.57. 7 and so if I really quickly calculate that for us, that gives me 0.333. So a third. All right. So then the, the other side, this was liquid over here, and so this one was corundum. So if we want to get corundum, then we're going to take the opposite of that, so x. And so we're going to have 1 over that fraction. And really quickly calculate that for you. That gives me 0.132. All right. And then one last one. If we want to get the last one, that is uh, up here at the top. Uh, that is molite. And that's going to be the last fraction. So since it's not on the base, that's the one in the middle, uh, opposite to that fraction y. So we're going to use y over the total. And so that's going to be 
point four point <laughs> sorry sorry about that uh, four point zero four uh, over that seven point five seven and so that's going to be four point zero four over that seven that gives me uh, point five three four. So that gives me all the fractions uh, for these three amounts. And just real quickly, if I add those up, I get 0.999, so 99.9%. So I'm very close to adding those all up. So it looks like my math here uh, is very close where I'm just having a very slight difference in X, Y, and Z compared to the base. And so that's okay as long as it's within reason, but always do a double check to make sure that the amounts add up roughly. And so that's what we have here. All right, so that's how we can get the uh, phase amounts for a um, three-phase field within a ternary phase diagram system.